hey, so you're here to learn how to meditate. Okay, well, you came to the right place. Here's the thing though. We are not going to jump straight into a meditation because if we do that, then you're gonna sit here and you're gonna fight your own mind for five minutes, 10 minutes. And at the end, you're gonna tell me that meditation doesn't really work for me. I've got too many thoughts. So instead in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how the mechanism of meditation actually works and how to make these different audios and methods and everything that you might come across online, how to make them actually truly effective. Really just having a simple understanding of how it works can unlock the true power because think about it for a moment. There are sculptures and temples and paintings and rituals and all kinds of things all around the world where you see people sitting in meditation pose. Why do you think that is? There might be something here that has made people devote themselves to this practice for thousands of years and literally build temples and sculptures. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that I know all the secrets of the universe and I'm the biggest yogi or whatever. I'm just another person just like you. But I have discovered a meditation method about 14 years ago that I still practice to this day, almost every day, and it is remarkably effective. And since learning it, I became so excited about this method that I've taught it to literally thousands of people now. And so many of them write me and message me and tell me about the miraculous power of this method in their own lives. So they're experiencing the same thing that I'm experiencing. And now I wanna teach you how to do the same. Now the whole thing begins by realizing that you have a voice inside your head or really you have voices, you know, you have inner talking, mental chatter. The big realization though is to understand that your thoughts, while they are a part of you, they're not necessarily you. And I know that's a bit of a, you're not your body, you're also not your mind, but you're a soul having a human experience. And now most people are completely identified with the voice inside their head. You've been listening to your own thoughts all your life and you didn't really realize that you could actually question them. Maybe have a bit of mistrust for some of those negative judgmental thoughts. Most of all, people don't realize that you can actually ignore your own thoughts. You don't need to listen to every single thought that you have. And when you ignore the voice inside your head for a period of time, following a specific technique, aka meditation, there is actually a miraculous side effect that can come about, which is the voice inside the head, all the chatter, the activity, slowing down, calming down, as if you had a remote control, you could slowly turn that voice down inside of your head. Now here's the thing, there is a direct link between the intensity of your thoughts and how your nervous system feels, how your emotions feel. I'm sure you've experienced many a time having a certain disempowering or stressful thought. Next thing you know, you have the same emotions that match that thought. Then here's where it gets tricky is when the feeling that you just created starts to influence your next thought. And then you create this spiral where everything starts getting crazier and crazier. Now. I'm gonna teach you how to take control of that or to use a better way, how to let go of that so that you can let the dust settle. The best way to explain this is with an analogy. Imagine you have a glass of dirty water, right? It's like muddy water with lots of little sediment bits floating all around inside. It's, it's kind of murky and you're, you come along and you're like, I want this glass to become clear. I want this water to be clear. Now, how do you get the water to become clear? You can't do it with force. You can't put your fingers in there and try to arrange all the particles and get them to settle down. Now, this is what most people do when they try to meditate. They say, I have too many thoughts. My mind is really active. Now I'm gonna sit and meditate. Let me stop my mind. That is the same thing as you sticking your fingers in that glass of water. Every reaction creates a reaction. And especially with the mind, the mind is so reactive. You know, we have 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. It just goes the moment you try to stop it. So you can't do it with force. What you do instead, just like the glass of water, is you put it over here, you leave it alone, and you leave it alone for long enough for it to calm itself down. Now the next question of course is, all right, so I'm gonna leave my mind alone. How do I do that? 
because I'm interacting with my thoughts all day long, right? And that's where the specific technique I'm going to explain to you comes in. It's called mantra meditation. Mantra because you're using a meaningless, harmonious sound inside of your head. So even though I say sound, it's like you imagine the sound. You don't actually say it out loud. Now you play a sound in your imagination along with your thoughts. So your mind is doing whatever it's doing, but now you suddenly imagine a sound as well. And this sound can be synced up with your breathing. And then the whole game basically becomes, where is my mind? Where is my attention? Is my attention on whatever thoughts, such as, oh, I've got to call my mom and then I need to make some food and then maybe I've got to call my friends and, oh God, I forgot that thing and blah, 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 blah. Is that what you're paying attention to? Or have you moved your attention to the meaningless, harmonious sound in your head that you're playing in a rhythmic fashion with your breath? Because when you're with that sound inside of your head, you're not creating more thoughts. You're not creating more turbulence. You're not stirring your finger around inside that glass. Now, to manage your expectations, the moment you come along and you're like, okay, let me just put my mind in park over here, your thoughts are very tricky. Your mind knows how to get your attention. So it's totally normal that when you first sit down to meditate and you put your mind in one place, it immediately wanders off. This is perfectly normal and to be expected. The key is not to get upset or to start adding more thoughts. Ah, oh, I can't believe I can't keep my mind in one place. This is much harder than I thought. These are all thoughts pretending not to be thoughts. Sitting here thinking about meditation as in, wow, I'm really good at meditating. I wonder how much longer I need to meditate for. Why didn't anybody tell me meditation was so easy? That's not meditating. That's thinking about meditating while you think you're not thinking, <laughs> okay? So the mind's very tricky. This is about expanding your awareness to become bigger than the chatter inside of your head. Because when you are the awareness of the voice, the thoughts, the chatter, you become a pure state of awareness. There are no judgments, there are no measurements, there is no today's meditation isn't as good as yesterday's meditation, I'm meditating better than this person. These are all tricks that your mind is playing. So put the tricks aside and imagine your mind is a puppy, okay? You come along and you say, all right, sit puppy, and the puppy wanders off. So you put it back in the same place. And this is the same as your mind wanders off into a thought, you notice that your mind has wandered off, you place your attention back on the mantra, back in that loop. It's perfectly natural that within a 20 minute meditation session, you will have to reset your mind sometimes hundreds of times. In fact, most times hundreds of times. 20 minutes is also the ideal amount of time to do as a minimum because the calming effect of meditation is non-linear. That means the first five minutes feels like nothing's really happening. 10 minutes, you're still sitting there, your mind is still wandering off and it's like, oh my God, is this thing ever gonna stop? And then somewhere around 15, 18 minutes usually, for me at least, it really starts to calm down. I call it the drop off. But here's the thing, you don't create expectations. If you expect it to happen, you are actually stopping yourself from making that happen. There is a wonderful paradox here. You have to drop all expectations around this practice so you sit down and you do it without expecting anything. And by doing that, you get the best effect, which actually gives you the most valuable thing in life, which is peace of mind. Because if you had all the materialistic things in existence, if you had a castle in France and a Lamborghini and whatever else, but you have a mind that is not your friend, you have anxiety, depression, whatever it might be, then you would give up all of that materialistic stuff just to have inner peace. And so that shows you that this is incredibly valuable, but you have to find a way to not put lots of importance on it while you're doing it, because that is creating more mental chatter. Now, another key point to understand is that you don't need to sit in a lotus position, that famous yogi pose that we associate with meditation. It is not required. All you need to do is sit in a way where you can forget about your body, but without falling asleep. So ideally, you just find a normal straight back chair, maybe use a pillow, sit with your feet on the ground, rest your hands in your lap, put your body in park. 
Now this also means if you need a glass of water, go to the bathroom first, make sure you don't have an itchy label in your clothes or something. Just make sure that nothing distracts you. And as you start practicing this more and more, you will become more used to the practice. And then after a while, you can do it in noisy places, even sitting less comfortably. But to begin with, so that you don't sit there and start shuffling around, trying to calm down and whatnot, it's best to do it with headphones in a comfortable, quiet place, sitting upright in just a normal chair or a bench against the wall is perfect. If you sit on the couch, for instance, cross-legged like I am right now, you might wanna use a bunch of little pillows or a jumper or something just to put between your legs where the bone meets. Because for five minutes you can endure it, but in six minutes, you're, all you're gonna feel is that pressure point on your legs, and that will stop you from allowing the dust to settle inside of your head. So that basically sums it up. I'm gonna keep it really simple here. Essentially, you're playing a game inside of your mind, which is, can I leave my thoughts alone for long enough until they calm themselves down? That is basically what you're gonna do. Now, one last thing. The best way to approach meditation is to make it a non-negotiable. Now, I know that's a big call right now because you haven't even done it potentially, but trust me, when you just add this one practice to your life, it's kind of like resetting your laptop. You know, you're holding down the power button, everything gets closed down, the trash gets empty, the battery calms down, the fan stops everything starts to work better, okay? You will regain your attention span, you will have greater emotional intelligence, you will become the master of your own mind in time. And the effects that you will notice in your life when you become a regular meditator, there is no area in your life that will be untouched in a positive way from this practice. You will sleep like a baby, you will become the calm center of your own universe, it is the most valuable thing that you could ever do for yourself in this lifetime. But your mind doesn't really wanna do it because it's the opposite of what your mind usually does. So I'm gonna give you one last tip before I'll recommend a video where you can practice this right now. And the tip is this, when it's time to go and meditate, don't negotiate with your own mind as to whether it's time to do that or not. Okay? Because if you have a thought that's like, wow, I should probably go and meditate. I feel kind of stressed. I'm thinking a lot. You know, I'm a little bit anxious or something. And then your mind goes, yeah, 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 we'll do it later. We'll do it, we'll do it this afternoon. We'll do it tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, 100%. That is the same as talking to a three-year-old child when it's bedtime. And the child says, yeah, 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 we'll go to bed tomorrow. And you go, okay. <laughs> okay, don't do that. And also don't create an attachment to having a perfect streak. This is another way the mind will trick you. Maybe you get really excited right now and you're like, wow, I'm gonna try this thing and I'm gonna do it every single day. And then you do for 14 days or 21 days. And then one day you have a, a day where you miss your session. And then your mind goes, ah, what's the point then? Ah, you know, we were doing so well, but I guess now we just, we just don't. That's the same thing as my electric razor running out of battery. And I just go, well, I guess I'll just let my beard grow now because what's the point? The mind is incredibly tricky. It uses strange logic like this. And for some reason, we accept it. So just be a little more skeptical of the chit chat that's going on inside of your mind. And trust me, by doing what you're learning in this video, by actioning this and making this a part of your daily routine, you will receive so much in return. The 20 minutes that we put in once a day, it will give you the most valuable thing in life, in a piece. Now it's time for you to put this knowledge into action and to see what I'm actually talking about. So click this video, use some headphones, find a comfortable place to sit, and do me a favor, leave a comment and a like so that more people can find this video. Enjoy your meditation practice and I'll see you in the next video.